Matthew, what's today's icebreaker? Today's yeah. icebreaker is, what is your favorite candy? Let's do top three candy. Let's do that. Top three. Top three. Because I feel like three. one is like, you can't do that. Top uh, three. Uh, Sour Patch Watermelon. Yeah, that's up there. That's up you there. like Swedish fish too, right? Yes, but here's some, my thing with Swedish fish is they could be really hit or miss, I feel like. Like, I've sometimes... Like I do really like Swedish fish, but I feel like the, I'm got to be in a certain mood for them. Like I have yeah. to be like, I want yeah. some Swedish food. But like sour patch watermelon, I can eat those whenever. I feel like with Swedish fish though, like you'll eat one and then you'll have to eat like more <laughs> until you feel sick. Yeah. Like you'll just have to keep eating. Yeah, them. and they make you like so sick if yeah. you eat too many. Also it's like Reese's peanut butter cups. Okay, like Reese's, that. sour patch kids. Mm, Kit Kats are always good, but I don't know <laughs> if I can put them up there. That's there's so many good candies. Yeah. Like there's so many solid candies. I just you just want to go with those two for now? I'll go with those two. Okay. I'll think about Gabe, my do you, third. Do you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, go. All right, my number one Because the, mine are very controversial. <laughs> the my number one is definitely sour like sour head extreme, like the ropes. Oh, you know, yeah, like the yeah, rainbow yeah, ropes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, those top tier right there. Huh, number two, I want to pick a chocolate because, like, I okay, don't know. I love chocolate, but the aftertaste, like, kind of gets me sometimes. Yeah. I'm going to put Kit Kat at number two. Kit Kats are so good. Yeah. And then my number three is probably the watermelon, sour head watermelon. Yeah. Okay. Watermelon. So I got to start off with, I don't think these are in, like, any particular order. These are just, like, the top three. I already know these are going to be outrageous. Yeah. Like, I can just. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my number one is gummy bears. Like, for sure, Gummy what, Bears what is number brand? one. What, what brand? brand? I like Albanese. Is like, that, like, the white package? Yeah. yeah. Those are so Those are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are Okay, but then the next two are, like, kind of out of order. Uh, okay. I love, okay, y'all are going to hate me for this, Dots. Oh, dude. Bro, the what? The candy, the Dots are I would, so good. I would good. throw those away if I got them for Halloween. No, give, Dots are, like, <laughs> so good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they leave like a terrible taste. Last week I was judging my pizza top, but now you're like judging my candy. I feel like we've talked about dots on the pod before. Yeah. Yeah. In one episode. And we had this exact same take. We like dots are not good. Yeah. No, they're amazing. No, bro. What's your, okay, so what's your three? Um Wait, okay, one so, one question, bro. Okay. So you walk into Walmart and you can choose out of a bunch of candy. Are you Do- actually, I have dots at my house right now. Like you're actually big, gonna pick dots? Yes, like the actual oh big thing gosh. I eat them. They're so good. Yeah. I it's like don't L-take. respect your opinion anymore. And then number three, high chews. I like high chews. I agree with high chews. So high-chews. good. Um, they kind of leave a little funny taste in your mouth, but it's fine. Yeah, but the most annoying part about that is how you have to open every, <laughs> every single, single one, one individually. Every single one of them is individually wrapped. Yeah. All right, my number three. I love some Mike and Ikes. My guys are pretty good. I, I like the market. Right I don't like the normal ones though. I, I like, like, like the, the tropical yeah, ones are really yeah. good. The normal ones are okay. It depends. It's kind of like Skittles. Like you have some of the different colors that you yeah, like. Yeah. Like it's always. All right. I think the Q and A is what is the worst candy? Yep. Yeah. That you've tried. We'll say that. Let us know. Yeah. What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? What's up? Welcome back. Episode 13, 412 Leadership Podcast. Yeah, if yes. you're new here, great to have you. I'm Garrett. I'm Matthew. And I'm Gabe. And we are your host of the 412 Leadership your Podcast, host. where we uh, like to have some fun. Yeah. And, uh, sometimes talk about leadership. Yeah. Sometimes. sometimes. Just kidding. We always <laughs> talk about leadership. So uh, stick around. Quick disclaimer. Uh, Texas is kind of a... Uh, crazy right now it is still allergy season yep. everyone and yeah. all of us are kind of i think winter is hitting this week it, it already like, ate, boy it has yeah. been allergy <laughs> yeah. season since we recorded on christmas eve yeah and it is now january 14th we're getting the coldest temperatures we've had all year this yeah. week. yeah it's supposed to get all up to like last year single digits yeah my car had snowflakes on it no not really like the ice snowflakes. You know what I'm talking about? But to all of our listeners no. that aren't from Texas, <laughs> here's the thing about Texas. When it gets cold, it that gets does cold. not mean it snows. No. It does yeah. not at all. Because it does not rain in Texas, for those that don't know. It does not rain here. We don't get water from the sky ever. Yep. Yeah. And so when it gets cold, it's just straight up five degrees with 20 mile an hour winds. Yeah. Yep. No the wind. snow. Yep. The wind chill is like negative 10. <laughs> Holy. Uh, 
I was I was joking and I was like, people are being over dramatic about this. Like the next day it's gonna be like eighty degrees and we're not gonna even know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. That's how it is. It's It'll probably be... gonna be five degrees in the morning and then at night it's gonna be like seventy. Yeah. <laughs> that's how yeah. it works. That's Texas weather for you. Yeah. Yep. But we're here today with a pretty good episode. We're talking about the one word. And if you don't really know what that is, always a lot of churches do this and really a lot of people in yeah. general. Like when you go into a new year, you always get your one word that you kind of want to yeah. live by that year. So that's what we're talking about uh, this week. We all have our word. Mm-hmm. We're all going to talk about it uh, just kind of by ourselves and then we'll kind of chip in and yeah. Yeah. give each other some feedback or even like make it into like why is this important. So yeah. that's what we're doing today. Um, if you haven't listened to last week's episode with Kel, Go listen to that. That was awesome. Uh, our guy, Kel, uh, super he kinda, fun. He kind of ins- inspired this podcast. Yeah. Kind of. He, he kind of. Yeah, he, honestly, yeah. We we don't give Kel a lot of credit because we, uh, a lot of people don't know this, but we are actually going to start something, not a podcast, but a online ministry yeah. with Kel. Yeah. And then Kel Has, was about to get married. Yeah, he got caught up in life. He got caught up in life, about to get married. They're about to move in a couple weeks to yeah. Georgia. Yeah. And, like, his job was an hour away each day, and he had to work, like, every day, and he was just driving an hour every day. Yeah, it got caught up, and we're still hoping that eventually we'll get to that. And so, really, though, that's kind of what inspired this podcast. So, yeah, that's our main guy, and if you haven't listened to that episode, go do it. So, yeah, let's dive straight into the one-word challenge. Uh, Who wants to kick it off first? Should we we talk about how it's important? Yeah, I think think we should. Let's talk about, like... The reason it's so important is because when you set your one word for the year, it gives you an idea of how you want to live your life and kind of what you want to aspire to. Yeah. Like as a church this year, our word for our church is growth. growth. Mm-hmm. And it's not just talking about numbers. Like we want to grow spiritually deeper. You know, it kind of gives you goals to set. So that's why it's important. Yeah. And like basically we always talk about goals and like expectations. This is like this should be your number one goal this year. Yeah. This whatever word yeah. you choose, like when you think of twenty twenty four, you should add that word onto it every time you think about it. For sure, agree, hundred percent. Like it, it kind of gives you a base start too. That's why we're in twenty one days of prayer, is so you can kind of yeah. find that goal for the year. Yeah, that's why they do it so early yep. in the year. Yeah, and when you're leading, when you're a leader, it's the one word is so important because you need that one word to lead your people. It's yeah. a word you can give to your crowd or your audience and be like hey this is our word for the year that we want to chase after like as the leader of some one or some group you have to give them a word to chase after i think that's yeah. why it's so important to have it so i yeah. think there's words that you chase as a group but then you have your own individual, individual word. Yeah. yeah you want to encourage the people you're leading also choose your own word don't just go after like, yeah we're all going after the growth word for our church but now it's like we have personal words too yep. that we're going to go after mm-hmm. so that's why it's important uh who wants to go first with their word? Mm. I think I'll go first. Yeah. I'll, go first. I'll go first. All right. So I was thinking about it a lot. Uh, I haven't really been able to attend 21 Days of Prayer because I start band and stuff in the morning. But uh, today I was actually between two words coming to this, which right. was closer and listen. Yeah. And I decided listen and felt like I should say listen. Yeah. Um, Yes, of course, you need to listen to God. We need to get closer and have that ear for Him yeah. because He is going to guide us through our lives, right? So the closer you are with Him, the easier life will be, right? Mm-hmm. So we just need to listen. But I also chose this word because we talk about this a lot, that we're selfish and we need to listen to people. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I think we need to, we need to get out of our, this is all about me, and mm-hmm. take input from people. You know what I mean? Learn, build off of people. Like, you just need to listen. So yeah. that's, what I, that's what I, at least I chose for the yeah, year. I like that. Yeah, I think that's, that's good. Yeah. That's like a big thing. Like you said, so we're in a hum, our human nature yeah. makes us selfish people. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times it's really hard for us to listen. And even like it's the most distracting thing, I guess, is distractions. Yeah. I was trying to pick out a word. That, but like, <laughs> when you're trying to listen, it, you're going to be distracted. Yeah, yeah. So I think, especially when you're trying to listen to God. Mm-hmm. Because we live in a world where nobody wants you to listen to God, and it's mm-hmm. everything's putting you opposite of God. Yeah. And so you really have to try to listen to what God's telling you. Yeah, and we and we we focus more on leadership here, but leaders have to listen to their people they're leading. Yeah, mm-hmm. because 
that shows that you are you actually care for your team and yeah. you mm-hmm. have input for your team, right? So we just need to listen, you know, that, does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I think. Especially you have to listen to God yeah. if you're a leader. You yeah. have to listen to God because he's going to tell you how to guide those people. Yeah. So I think that's great. Yeah. So that reminds me of uh, this, I think it was like two days ago, the 21 Days of Prayer, the message was like, you know, we're all sheep. And once we like find our shepherd, which is God, then we won't want to listen to anything else. You know, because sheep, they have their one shepherd. They won't listen to anything. Yeah. They'll only listen to him. And that's how we should all be. Yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, that then that was like a really good message because yeah. like it, he talked about how sheep like their only really good thing that they're good at is listening. Yeah. And is loyalty. That's like the only two good things are at, like that they do. Is, and so it's, I think that's great. Just yeah. Listen. You have to listen. Quote of the day, be a sheep. Be a sheep. <laughs> be a, be a sheep. sheep. And yeah, be a sheep. So yeah, yeah, I think that's great. What you got? All right. My word, which I actually wrote this a whole bunch of paragraphs. But so my word for the year is peace. You know, just normal peace, you know. I feel like it's super generic, but really though. So I feel like this last 2023, I was like, I was with God, but I wasn't experiencing the best of him, which is like your dad said this Sunday. So this year, I really want to push in and experience God's best, which is his peace. And like with everything that's happening this year, like we're about to make our career decisions in like the next six months. So I want peace in that. I just want peace in every aspect of my life, like with my relationships and all that. Like I just really need some peace in my life and I just want to live for that. Yeah, I think that's good. You say it's generic, but somebody's got to say it. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, and I feel like it's it's only generic because we all need it. it. Yeah. Like it's like we talked about with Kel last week on the podcast, like in your life you're going to know when and when you don't have peace. Like you're yeah. gonna know when and when you don't. don't. So I think that's important because peace is like that's how you get through things, is you gotta have peace. Like you gotta have a sense of peace, like I'm gonna make it through this, I'm going to succeed. Like you've gotta be Peaceful, and I think as leaders, it's important. You can't be a leader that lives in chaos. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and and we all need it. So it's good that you bring it up because some people are like, "Nah, nobody needs peace." Like I can. So kind of some people are are raised like, "Oh, I can deal this by myself," right? But then when they experience the peace that they get from God, then they're like, "Why haven't I lived like this the rest of my life?" Yeah, and yeah. like twenty one days of prayer is reminding me. Like it reminds me how your dad said it. Like he said. Mm-hmm. Imagine what would happen if we prayed before everything. Yeah. And I think me doing that has really gave me peace in a lot of situations that I normally wouldn't have peace in. So I just want to invite y'all to try that. You know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like honestly, I hundred percent agree with that, like praying before everything. Like I literally had a situation yesterday. i uh I was I almost out of gas and I'm on the way to school. So I had to go get gas. But I left, I made sure I left the house early to give myself time, but I went to <coughs> the gas station and my car like wasn't working and so i was just like jesus i need your help right now yeah. I, I was like i gotta get gas i gotta be get to school and literally i kid you not next time i put my card in boom it worked nice i tried it like four times i sat there in the cold for like five minutes i, like, <laughs> I thought you said your car didn't work yeah that's what i heard your card you say your card like card credit, so like, here's like what i put card. my credit card in the thing <laughs> and it wouldn't read it it was stuck inside of there and i had to pull it out multiple times like the pump i went to was not working and so I finally was like, Jesus, I just need your help right now. Because yeah. I'm, I was like, one, it's 15 degrees, <laughs> yeah. and it's very windy, and I'm standing out here trying to get my car some gas. Yeah. I need you to just help me out here. And then it works. And I, yeah. I, thought like, you were, I thought you said your car. I was like, oh, oh yeah, my car didn't work. Yeah. And my car has a history of not working. Yeah, I think so. we've almost died so many times in your car. My not car really, is very but... old, guys. It still works, but hey. Hey, it gets us from point A to point yeah. B. Yeah. I want to give another story about that. So this week, so Tuesday, we had a milestone retreat. And then Wednesday, I wasn't at school. Thursday, I wasn't at school because I was sick. I got sick from there, I guess. But anyways, so Friday, walking into school, I was like so stressed because I knew I had missed so much. And I was just like, God, just please help me through today because I know I'm going to be stressed with all this work. But, like, I'm telling you, dude, I finished all that work like that. Like, really? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when and, they, like, usually I would be stressing over it, but I literally, like, I just got to work and I got it done, like, super yeah. fast. When you have peace, like, great things happen, I guess. And it's a lot easier. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. What's yours? 
My word for this year, and honestly, I'm not even going to lie, I got this because, and actually the whole idea of this episode, I got from uh, an assignment I did in my English class where we had to come up with our word for the year. And I was like, hold on, this is actually, yeah, good. this is something. I might have done School that same teaching assignment. teaching us something. Was, yeah. it, was it like <laughs> circles? And you-, you had to like come up with six words and like narrow, like first of all, first you had to write and this is actually, I thought this was really good. And I didn't like, I wouldn't have ever expected this in like school. Is you had to write a whole paragraph for 10 minutes. You had to free write about things that you liked about yourself going into the new year. Because yeah. everybody wants to change things about mm-hmm. themselves. It, you had to write things about yourself that you liked. And then it was like, get some of those words, narrow it down, and you choose one of those words to be your word for the year to keep yeah. going. And so I was like sitting there and I was like, wait, this is actually. <laughs> a very good idea. Yeah. And so in that I kind of came up with the word authentic and I feel like this word is like we live in a world where nothing is authentic and yeah. people are fake. Yeah, people are fake. Uh, mm-hmm. fake. Products are fake. Sometimes food is fake. Yeah, you, you don't is, know what you're eating yeah, now. You, <laughs> <don't know, but laughs> yeah. you, you don't know what's fake and what's real in this world. And I feel like for me like Authentic to me means like I just want to be me. I want to yeah. be who I am and not try to force anything. Yeah, yeah because I feel good. like we all and we've all kind of been through this where we live in a world like we try to be someone we're not to fit in with the people we know mm-hmm. or try to fit in with our friends. Like yeah. we just got to be us. And being authentic is also admitting that God has made you a certain way and that you're just gonna be that way. Yeah, like, be and who you are. Yeah. Don't be somebody else. Don't try to change yourself because God made you like that for a reason. Oh. Yeah, for sure. That's big. Oof. Like, just be authentic. And so for me, that's like being authentic in the way I act, the way I walk in my faith, being authentic in my relationship with God. Like, mm-hmm. part of that was like, I got to throw away some things and like make sure that my focus is on the right thing so I can really be the best version of myself. That's really what I want to, like, authentic to mean is me being the best version of myself for the next 300 and however many days now, <laughs> 350 something days. Like, I just want to be the best version of me. For 2024 yeah and set myself up for a good 2025 yeah, yeah. so i feel that's like good. that's where my word comes from is like as leaders we have to be authentic no one wants to be under a fake leader yeah 100 yeah. like, percent. you've got to be vulnerable we went to uh and uh transparent like we went to milestone on tuesday like gabe was talking about and the biggest thing uh there was a pastor cannot remember his name i forgot it already preached the first session we were at and talked about how leaders in the church are so so attacked mm-hmm. and you have to be transparent like you yeah. because if you try to hide all of this inside you and not be authentic and real about it uh-huh. it will destroy you from within and that therefore will destroy your entire thing you've got going yeah yeah and so like that's just me i just want to be authentic i want to be me who god's called me to be i want to be the best version of myself i can for the year yeah and so. you said like uh, leaders are so attacked. Like you got to think of it like a tree. If you attack the roots, then it's going to kill the whole tree, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you attack the root of the church, right, which is our leaders and our elders and stuff like that, if you attack the leaders, then the church is just going to spread. Spread. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why I think the devil attacks the leaders so much yeah. because they're because kind of the, if the, the devil root. were to attack just some random person that goes to church here, he has no influence. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It, even like the Bible says everything starts at the head yeah like and that means everything like spiritual attacks like so I just want to encourage like everybody listening like be you you know like don't try to be someone else to fit in like we it's hard to fit in if you're going to be a believer like it's very hard to fit in yeah. with some things that people do like but just be who you are yeah. and here's the thing is that people like my biggest thing for the last couple of years is like I was afraid like people a lot of people think it's some people might think it's weird a lot of people think it's different but here's the thing is like if being a follower of Jesus is different then I'm okay with being yeah. different yeah. alright guys this has been awesome so yes. far yeah it's been a fun time uh, now we're gonna kind of dive into like a real talk type of thing we haven't done one of these in a while but uh, the thing that we want to talk about today is something that actually ties in with the one word yeah. challenge, yeah. which is the one year challenge. <laughs> Basically, yeah. One year challenge is something we do at our church and a lot of different churches do it where you, you know, you just, you got to give God a year of 
yeah. your life. Mm-hmm. And you just, we're going to talk about the importance of that and kind of what it is. So anybody want to talk about kind of what that looks yeah. like? Yeah. So basically the one-year challenge is going all in for one year. Yeah. Like if you just go all in, go to first Wednesday, motion, Sundays, 21 days of prayer, right? Have a relationship yeah. with God. <clears throat> if you do it for a whole year, you'll look back and be like, who is this person? Yeah. yeah. And I think one of the <coughs> biggest things about that is that once you do it for a year, you will never want to go back to who you were. Yep. Yeah. And when you do it for a year, then you're going to do it the next year too. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. This, the next year, the mm-hmm. next year. Like it's just, it'll be a continuing process of like, you go above and beyond. Like it's not just, you know, I'm showing up. Like I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah. just showing up. I'm going all in. Like I'm serving. I'm uh, getting involved in a small group, getting involved with people in my church you know making relationships like it's you know and it starts with 21 days of prayer like the easiest yeah. way is to just show up uh-huh. like because the hardest part about starting the one year challenge is showing up uh-huh. yep once you show up you can let god do the work you yeah. have to be there though. Like, you've got to be the one to get out of bed at five thirty on a <laughs> wednesday morning and be yeah. like hey yeah well, i gotta eat the prayer and then i have motion later that night so yeah. uh one thing I want to add with that is that you do need to show up, but you also need to open your heart for yeah. God. Because, like, if you show up and you're just like, I don't even know why I'm here. Like, I don't want to be here. Dude, nothing's going yeah, to happen. Like, you have to, like, pursue vulnerable. it. Yeah, yeah, be vulnerable. That's a great word. Yeah, like, you got to, like you were about to say, like, you got to pursue it. Yeah. Like, you can't just, like, you know, be like, well, I'm here, you know. Yeah. Like, what's God, God do something in my life. Well, yeah. Like, <laughs> like, the biggest thing is, like, in – you like you hear this all the time in prayer and then like all pastors say it like you've got to open up your heart you've got to open up your mind like the biggest thing is like you've got to submit yourself to god like you've got to give everything you have to him and let him work on you because Uh it's kind of like you know if i took my car down to the shop and i was like hey uh my car needs to be fixed but i'm not going to let you guys work on it but i need it to be fixed yeah they'd be like well what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do we do? Like when you take your car to the shop, you have to let them fix it. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. When you show up to church, you have to let God work on you. Yeah. It's like you gotta, you can't just show up and be like, "Hey, I'm here. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely different when I walk out of here." No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you have to let Him change you. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be okay with change. Yeah, we don't like it, but and like if you're still holding on to your past, holding on to what you've been doing, then like it doesn't work like that. You can't do that. Like you have to let go of your past and focus on what's in front of you. Yeah. And I think the important thing with that is like the biggest thing with like people who are timid of diving in is that they are afraid and they're shameful Yeah, because it's like, you know, everybody has this mentality of, well, I've done this. I've done X, Y, and Z. God's never going to use me or work on me. Yeah. But that's not, the truth. The truth is, is that uh, you heard, we heard the other day in prayer, uh, or maybe it was at milestone. I can't remember. Uh, God doesn't call the qualified. Yeah. Actually, it was emotion night. Pastor Gary yeah. said it. God doesn't call the qualified. Qualifies. He qualifies the called. Yeah. So it's like you don't just like God doesn't just choose who He works on. He'll uh-huh. work on anybody. You have to be accepting. Like yeah. the only type of choosing God does is that He chooses those who want Him to work on them yeah like if you don't if you're not interested in god then he he's still gonna love you but he's not gonna put a lot of as much focus as he would on someone who's like god i need you god i want you yeah. to do big things with me mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah i think another thing like people hold on like they're like i'm going to church and all this and i want god but i also like those parties are so fun i don't want to miss out on those parties i don't want to miss out on hanging with those those bad friends that are Dis- discouraging me that aren't putting yeah. me in the right path. Yeah. So they, it's like, which one do you want to hold on to? And I just want to tell you that you need to hold on to God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be a straddler. Don't be like, I got one foot. Yeah. On I actually, one side, yeah. One I saw an analogy about that. It was a pastor. He was on two ladders. Yeah. And like, one leg was on one, one leg was on the other. And he can't keep going up because eventually, you this like, you can't keep staying with both sides. Like, you're going to have to choose one. It really just depends yeah. on you. Yeah. And if you. Here's the thing I would say is if you hold on to your one side, the bad side, the worldly side, you hold on to that too long, and it'll just knock you down. Yeah. 
and you got to restart all over again. And you don't want to – it shouldn't take you getting knocked down to realize that you need God. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes it does, but it shouldn't. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's what I yeah. got. I mean, uh-huh. I think it's important – we can talk about this for a minute before we close things out. But, like, what – what are some of the easiest things that you would encourage somebody that's listening? Like, how how do you go about doing the one year challenge? I one for thing for me was to surround myself with people who are encouraging, yeah, and not discouraging. Uh-huh. And like even school friends, you know, like it's honestly kind of hard to see who yeah. is actually a Christian at school because people hide it so much. Yeah, you know. But they like you mentioned it, and they'll be open about it. They're yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So but you, the, just you really need, can't tell on the outside. Yeah, I I would just in, uh, get with people who are there for you and who are encouraging and not discouraging. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's a big thing that I've done was set apart time each day, which, is like, you just dedicate that time to God. Like, uh, what was it? Pastor Ben and Pastor Gary said it. They said five minutes of worship, five minutes – or five minutes of uh, reading your Bible yeah. – Five minutes of worship and then five minutes of prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think like that's just fifteen minutes every day. Like yes, and that's I think that's great. Yeah, because the thing that they always say before that is everybody talks about. Well, I don't got time to do anything. Yeah. We all have fifteen minutes in our day. Uh-huh. I know I do. I know I go home like when I get done with all my busy work, I go home and I at least sit down on the couch yeah. and watch TV for fifteen yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard because you're gonna have to sacrifice something because like yeah. you're usually always doing something. Like maybe you lose that that nap, maybe you lose like twenty minutes of sleep in the morning, but you're waking up and you're actively pursuing God, and it'll help you. Yeah, and I like one thing for me is like when I started doing that and like really going into giving God some time in the morning like even if it's really early like 21 days of prayer yeah. like, i feel juiced mm-hmm. like, it, i feel yeah. excited i feel ready to go yeah and you don't find yourself getting tired honestly like i don't find yeah. myself getting super exhausted even though i woke up earlier because i'm like well i woke up and i went and got with god yeah you know, I'd... and you're like not grumpy at all yeah and like not being grumpy is a great thing like it's hard to show that you're a christian <laughs> when you're grumpy yeah. so if you wake up early and show that or show that time to God, give that time to God, yeah. then it'll really change how you look or how people look at you and how you act. Yeah, I think a big thing is uh, if you don't get in the Word for the one-year challenge, you, you've got to get in the Word. And I think the easiest way to do it, and I do it, is the one-year Bible. Yeah. Like, and it's and I know people are like, reading the Bible in one year, like, I can't do Actually, that. <laughs> it's really not. Like, here's what... It is. It's really just you, you read about five different parts of Scripture, five or six a day, and you'll have like maybe two or three full chapters. Yeah. The other three things are just little verses, little tiny chunks of the Word. And even just doing that, you'll find things each and every day that's like, man, that's good. Or like, yeah. now I kind of understand this. And like, you really will read the entire Bible in one year if you yeah. stick to it each and every day. And you don't have to do the full thing. You don't have to read the entire thing every day. But even just reading a little bit of that yeah. each and every day, it gives you something. Yeah. gives God something to hold on yeah. to. And, like, I think the biggest part of why people don't do that is, like, they're reading it. And they're just like, what am I reading? Like, mm-hmm. this isn't talking to me at all. I don't know what I'm reading. But, like, it's happened for me many times. But, like, I'll read something. I'll be like, I mean, I read it, but I don't really understand that. But then there will be, an inst- or like, a situation later in life. I'll be like that is like just like how the bible said mm-hmm. like at the time i didn't think it would like affect me at all but then like i think back and it's leading me right back to where i read that yeah, yeah. agree yeah that's our real talk for today yeah, yeah. <laughs> dive in one year challenge like this year i every one of our listeners i want you to get your one word mm-hmm. Get into the one year challenge. Get into the one year Bible. Do it all. Yeah. And let us know like how it goes. How is it going to change your life? And if you want like, and if you know us personally, or even if you just want to reach out, like yeah. reach out to us, and yeah. we will talk about it with you. Like I'm, I love like I have come to love talking about stuff like this to people. Yeah. Like I love hearing people like, well, you know, this is happening in my life and it's awesome. Like yeah. I want to hear about it and I want to be able to kind of walk you through like. <laughs> A big thing that we talked about at Milestone is discipling people. Like, I want to be, I want us three to be able to disciple all of our listeners. And yeah. it's like, I don't really care how many listeners we're getting. I just want to walk you guys through the life yeah. that God's called you to live. Yeah. So, that's good. That's yeah. a real talk. Yeah. Okay. I, 
Ice Baker. Maker. Time to end it up. <laughs> All right. Throw a little curveball. Okay. Do you prefer breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Ooh. As of right now, I can only eat dinner. Yeah. Well, and like, let's say, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's a bad <laughs> list, but, but like, yeah, when you're not fasting, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Mm. Dinner, bro. Definitely dinner. I don't wake up early enough when it's not 21 days of prayer to eat <laughs> breakfast. Yeah. No, My usually, lunch is like usually really rushed, and you, I just want to go home and like sleep. And I'm really not hungry because my lunch is at like eleven in the morning. Like dinner is always like dinner is where you get the best food. Yeah, like you always get something good at dinner. Okay. I think this like, is this is mine. Okay, I don't wake up. I don't eat breakfast. Like I don't wake up. And I don't either. Breakfast. Except in twenty one days of prayer. I want breakfast yeah. for dinner. Like if breakfast I could have that exactly. breakfast for dinner. Yeah. Oh my, that's what I would do. Yeah. Here's what I'll say though about waking up earlier in 21 days of prayer is like you know when i wake up at eight on a regular school day because i don't have to be at school till nine i'm not very hungry i don't eat breakfast because mm-hmm. it kind of holds me off till lunch but I, when i wake up at 5 30 and get to prayer by the time it's 7 30 and i'm oh, yeah. at home i'm like <laughs> starving. i'm starving yeah i'm like it's because you know i've already been up two hours like it's it's difficult but breakfast for dinner yep is yeah the, i feel like it's the greatest i could have i think what do y'all what do y'all make like specifically like all of it i i really like bacon eggs my family is more of a meat family really so like we we do like uh sausages yeah a sausage we do like breakfast burritos like oh, really? we'll cook like sausage and eggs and all that and we'll just throw it on a tortilla and, like, i will tell you that probably one of my favorite foods is a good breakfast burrito yeah because yeah. you can eat it for anything you can really <laughs> eat it for any meal yep. the day. all right so i think we come to clean Conclusion. Conclusion. Conclusion that breakfast is the best. Yeah. I think not, bro, not if breakfast this, wasn't so early, it'd yes. be such a good meal. Yes. Like, I feel like go to IHOP, you use some hash browns, yeah. bacon, egg, sausage. Yeah. Like that, like, I mean, that's yeah. Just, yeah, they serve it all day. So, <laughs> yeah, like, thank, thank God for See, IHOP. Here's what I don't Actually, understand. I think I'm more of a Crackle Barrel kind of guy. Really? Yes. I don't understand why... Food places don't serve breakfast all day. Yeah. Like you McDonald's. know how much money you could make? Like yeah. Chick-fil-A chicken minis, oh, if they dude. serve those things <laughs> that is all day, literally that is all, all I would eat. Yeah, that should be an all-day item anyways. Like, like, how is that breakfast? Yeah. Like, chicken minis are literally anointed <laughs> by God. Put in Chick-fil-A, they make it, and it is literally the greatest yep, thing I've yeah. ever eaten. I like their hash browns, too. Hash browns yeah. like, the little circles. Can, if they made it during dinner time, it would be ten times better. They would make so much money. <laughs> yeah. like Chick-fil-A, if you are listening. They don't need any more money. They would make so much money from, from me, <laughs> from me bro. Oh, yeah, like, no. I can sit there dangerous. and eat so many chicken minis. Yeah, like, and like the serving sizes are weird, bro. It's like either four or ten. <laughs> like, what? But I always have to eat the ten because I'm like, I'm not going to eat. I'll eat way exactly. more than four. Exactly. Yeah, you know? So, well, Chick-fil-A, if you're yeah. listening, that's safe, chicken so. minis all day. Be yeah. careful. If you want some money. <laughs> well, Chick-fil-A is the Lord's, the Lord's chicken. That's good for you. <laughs> you got good chicken. It's been a great episode. Yeah, yes. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I mean, we just had, we had yep. a good talk. Good a really talk. good talk. Yeah. We haven't really ever done anything like this where we kind of just all had different things. Nope. Not really and, no uh, points. Just... Honestly, we didn't really know what each other was yeah. what we were all going to talk about until yeah. we got into this. And so, yeah, I feel like it was great. Uh, stay tuned for all the things we got coming. Yep. Next week, another great episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You'll get more on that soon. Yeah. Let us know what you want us to, Like, give us some ideas, guys, because yeah. like, we, we love getting ideas for y'all. Mm-hmm. We want to hear what you want yeah. To hear from us though. Like we and want when we tells. when we get ideas from y'all, it helps us really know that we're making a difference. A difference. Yeah. yeah. Like we don't want to have a whole episode topic and it's like Oh, no why? one no one gained off of that. Like, no <laughs> one even wanted to hear that. Yeah. Like, so you guys tell us. Uh tell us what you want to hear and we'll go from there. So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Make sure you're following us on all of our platforms. Uh yeah. we're yeah. gonna drop a lot of content this week actually. We're gonna drop separate each one of us is gonna drop our little separate uh clip of what our one word is yeah and so yeah get your one word dive in go all in this is 2024 year of growth mm-hmm. let's yeah. do it we appreciate right. you yeah. guys yes if you have it this week yeah next week if you haven't go watch last week's episode yes it's yeah. a good, good one. one all right make sure you're right. following us see y'all love y'all